All reverence. All romance to our Heavenly Father. Intimacy and honor to our bridegroom and our king. And to the precious Holy Spirit, who is the seal of this intimacy, relationship, fellowship, and communion. I also want to honor each and every one of you that's present, gathered in the company of angels. May you take your seats in heavenly places. Before we begin tonight, the Father is speaking. Jesus is doing. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit is moving. And Jesus said tonight, before you tend to my father's business, first, my heart, my times and my seasons is the order and priority at my feet. I have a letter to share with you first before we begin. Because through it all, what he desires most with friends, sons, and brides beyond the business or the ministry or even assignments, first, come back to your first love. Our first love is more important than our duty in the kingdom. And Jesus always has songs and psalms and love letters and suffering letters for his sons, his friends, and his brides. And I'm going to be sharing with you tonight before we pray. But prepare. The reason why you see in the chat, I put the list of the 50 nations, sorry, the 50 states, before we even begin, each one of you on the line, pick one of the states. Today, Jesus said, each one must open their line. We're going to go one by one, pick a state. And you are going to pray for that state tonight. Individually, we're going to go one by one. He said, one by one, tell them to pick a state. And they are going to pray over that state. And then we go to the next person who has the next state. But that's towards the end. So the father's business, which is a demand and supply, he has a demand, we must supply obedience. But before we do the business side of the kingdom for his plans, purposes, and what he wants us to pursue this next seven years, I want you all to please fully understand the Father's way. Whenever Father wants to do a thing in the whole earth, he always chooses one nation to deal with like Israel. When he wants to establish his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, he always chooses a nation on earth for it to spread. And it so happened to be the nation that, this was also revealed to my spiritual father, that America is the nation in this last days and end times that has been chosen for the latter glory and beyond. The latter glory, it's the move of God in Joel and Haggai that was prophesied that in the end times and last days, there's going to be one last battle 
one last move, and it is the greatest because the best wine is left for the last. Because this generation or our generation has the most souls on earth than any other generation on earth in human history. And so he always chooses one nation to establish, settle what he's saying, doing, and moving. And then all the nations around the world comes to that nation to see his glory. This is in Isaiah 66. And so the reason why America has been chosen, I'll share with you when Jesus took me to the tree of life and each nation on earth represented a leaf on the tree. So each nation on earth was not a fruit. There was a leaf. And then he shook the tree with his bare hands. And the leaves that were not strong began to fall off. Many nations fell off the tree of life. Only two leaves, two branches, two fruits were left. And Jesus said, there's two nations I have chosen because in the end, they will be my brides, friends, and sons. The nation whom you see I chastise, correct, and rebuke the most is my son. You see that? That's why America is going through chastisements because America is supposed to, let me tell you America's destiny. Don't miss this. America's destiny is to be a son. Israel's destiny is to be a bride. But he can't yet find a nation he can choose as his friend. I'm going to say that again. Look, listen, and learn. And learn the ways of the king and his heart for nations. It's not just a revival of love or a revolution of glory. It's not about, even, it's not about a move of God. The destiny of every nation on earth is like unto Israel. When God the Father came down in the name of Jehovah, I am that I am through Moses, his intent was not just to come down on the third day and give them Ten Commandments. His intent was to marry the whole nation by covenant. And that's what he wants to do in these last days and end times. And he has to choose one nation in order to bring other nations into that covenant. It so happened to be America. So, when we say we are praying for the destiny of America, we are praying that America will become a bride. America will become a son. America used to be a friend, and they still are a friend because of their covenant with Israel. They are a friend, but that's not their destiny. The destiny of this nation is to be a bride. One on earth as it is in heaven. That was the destiny of Israel. Was to be a bride. They started off as a son, Jacob. They already had a friend in Abraham. Abraham was a friend of God. He's the father of Israel. But their destiny was to be a, see, was to be a bride. And Jehovah ended up divorcing Israel because they began to whore after other gods. They forfeited their destiny for whoredom. So we're not just gathered here just to pray for the nation, even concerning the election and whom he has chosen. It's far more exceeding, and there's a far more exceeding weight of glory that he wants resting on this nation. So his plans, purposes, and pursuits for the whole world will be fulfilled, especially the book of Revelations. So please look and listen and learn and understand why when we talk about friends, sons, and brides, it's not just people. It's also talking about nations and kingdoms and empires and worlds and continents. Can you imagine the whole continent of Africa becoming a son of God?
They don't worship no other God but the one true God for, from generation to generation. That's, that's the, what you call the destiny of a nation. And Holy Way plays a crucial role in the sons, friends, and brides because he's going to show his face different in different nations. If he shows his face in Australia, he will tell you Australia is my bride. So therefore the bridegroom bridal glory will hit Australia. But his face towards a different continent or a different nation is not the same. That's why it's called face to face. You're going from nation to nation by face, by heart, by hand. Even the name of the Father is not the same in every nation on earth. Each one of you need to come into full maturity and start getting acquainted with his face, his heart, and his hand. Watch this. Beyond your personal relationship with him. You should be able to know his face concerning America, his heart concerning America, his hand concerning. I'm not talking about a word. I'm talking about beholding his face clearly, knowing his heart and his hand and his name for that nation. And if the earth is waiting for manifestation of sons, sons know the full will of their father and they execute his plan, his purposes for his kingdom to not only advance, but be established because they are sons are, an, are heirs to the throne. They do what they see their father do. Father rules, they reign. So these seven days, as I'm, I'm going to read the letter to you very soon. It's a letter to his brides. But the father also has a letter to sons whom he wants to be friends. You hear it every day, but what you need to understand is there are new every morning. Don't get familiar with hearing sons, friends, and brides when you have not yet become. You have to become. It's not enough to hear him say, you are my bride. Was and is. What about what is to come? You have to be a friend with him that was and is and is to come. You have to be a son that was and is and is to come. You have to be that bride that was and is and is to come. Threefold cord of intimacy. Because Lucifer started as a son, he ended up being an enemy. You can never be... Um, I mean, I use the word casual, but you can never be familiar or content or casual with a relationship. If he says there is new every morning, that means he's not only doing a new thing every morning. Every morning, there's a new relationship waiting for you. In the friendship realm alone has 12 levels of relationship. In the bridal realm alone has 12 levels. In the son realm also has 12. Because 12 is always the number of establishment. So please, before I get to the letter of his heart, tonight I was going to be obedient and start immediately. Okay, Lord, you said this is what you want to do today. You want each one of them to take one of the states and pray over each state. He said, wait. Before you do the business of the father, I want their hearts first. I want their hearts on intimacy, relationship, fellowship, and communion. That is my heartbeat. Daily. The business is beautiful. But one thing I desire for my bride the most is her company. See, her company more than ministry. We can get carried away by ministry sometimes. Even doing his assignment, you must learn how to. Okay, wait, before I even do the assignment, let me love him first. We don't want to be that group in Holy Way when he says, 
did we not do many mighty works in your name? Did we not cast out devils in your name? Did we not pray for America? And he says, I never knew you. So you see, they put works above knowing him. That's why we must put knowing him before works. That's the order. Don't work for someone you don't have a relationship with. You will become a different type of worker. A worker of iniquity, not a worker of love. And sons are obedient to the father. But when Jesus steps in, you must put a halt. Okay, before we do the father's business. He wants to talk to his brides first. He wants to talk to his friends first. He wants to talk to his sons first. About their intimacy, relationship, fellowship, and communion. Then, you know what time it is. Just the intimacy alone, you will know what season we are in and what you need to be doing. Let me say that again. You must know times and seasons and what you ought to be doing. And it's not the same every day. I'm telling you the truth. Every, every day he's doing a new thing and he's saying new things. Maybe I'll share that one day with you all when he says, it's only those who are close to me and in right standing will, will interpret what I'm saying. The rest, it will only be a sound. That's not, that's not good. So just hear the sound and not hear him. That's not good at all. That means you're not in right standing with him. Yeah, but you see that? So, yes, we have an assignment for seven days. We're going to be obedient to Jesus, but we can't, we can't always be assignment excited more than just loving him. Simple. Just him. He said, teach them first how to win my heart and how to win my father's heart. You see, how many of you have ever heard about getting the victory in intimacy? How to win the heart of Jesus. How to win the heart of the father. Not win a battle. Not win a war. No. Winning his heart. You can know his heart, but you've not yet won it. Teach them how to win my heart. Win the Father's heart. When you win my heart, then victories of all kinds come out of my heart. In your walk with me concerning battles, trials, the victory is sure because you won my heart first. And when you win my heart, my hand moves for you without you asking. Come and seek my face in a new way. Come and seek my father's heart in a new way. My brides, my sons, and my friends, do you want to know me intimately in a new way? Within this new body. Take note. Within this new body, my son, my brides, my sons, and my friends will desire to know me intimately. My bride will seek my heart. Take note of this. My bride will seek my heart. My sons will seek my face. My friends will seek my hand. So within this body, they will seek my heart, my counsel, my face, my wisdom, my voice, me. My bride will love me and obey me. Do you know, do you want to know me intimately in a new way? So if he's saying he wants you to know him in a new way, that means he wants to reveal himself to you in a way he has not yet. Everybody, please write this one down wherever you are. 
This should be an intimate request. You ready? Remember, he says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts. Please write this one down. It will help you stay current in the new. I want to walk with you in a way I've not yet walked. Write that down. I want to talk with you in a way I've not yet talked. See, you can talk to him in the old ways, but you have not yet learned the new ways of how he wants to communicate with you. So watch this. You are still old. And then when he starts talking a new way, you get offended. Because he might be talking to you through the word. And then all of a sudden he's talking you talking to you through nature. He wants you to stay flexible, meek especially, in the way he wants to come to you, not how you want him to come. That's control. So write this one down. I want to love you in a way I've not yet loved. I want to walk with you in a way I've not yet walked. I want to talk with you in a way I've not yet talked. I want to dance with you in a way I've not yet danced. I want to see you in a way I've not yet seen. I want to hear you in a way I've not yet heard. I want my heart to understand you in a way it has not yet understood. I want my face to seek you in a way it has not yet sought. Are we all writing it down? This will help you stay new, current. You won't go by, watch this, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Not what he said to Moses, you can't see my face. See? That means people who speak that scripture are still old. God is, God is no more relating to us like he related to Moses. You be, I'm, I'm going to say it. I'm, I'm going to share with you, even though I'm still waiting for fullness but I'll share just a little bit with you what he said today so that we, go, we can all, I'm, I'm just going to say it as it is. Each one of you must get the fullness of Jesus and the Father in Holy Way. Full stature, full measure. An intimacy without measure. Come on. A fellowship without measure. A communion without measure. I'll tell you the truth. He wants to have a relationship with you in a way he has not yet had with any man or woman since the beginning. Beyond Enoch. You know what he said? Let me just, I'm just going to say it as it is because I will not deny him all his words before men. He said, all the ancient walks of intimacy in the Bible, all the mantles of intimacy, different colors. And I'll share with you how. Watch this. Because Holy Spirit is leading me to share this encounter so that each one, each one of you, you understand the colors by intimacy. So let me first share that intimacy. Then we're going to get there because <laughs> you got to grab this mantle of intimacy. Now, I'm not, I didn't say mantle for your assignment. Mantles are always first for intimacy before assignment or destiny. He said, okay, let me just share this one. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In heaven... After a 40 days shut away, I was taken to heaven on the 41st day. And in heaven, the father was seated on at his table. The table was white and gold. Jesus was at, was at his right hand. Watch this. So you, you'll be able to tell by color people's level of intimacy in heaven is by, watch this, the color that's beaming around their hearts. When I looked at Moses, he was wearing a, a red robe, but his heart was beating red. 
when I looked at Enoch, his heart was beating, was he was wearing a green robe, but his heart was was beaming green. So it it shows their intimacy by color and by nature and character. I'm going somewhere because we can idolize the old when he wants to do a new thing. Each one of them, the robes they were wearing and the way their hearts was, the light in their hearts or the treasure in their heart for the father was beaming, revealed the level of intimacy they reached before they left the earth. And that they, that's the same one they have in heaven. Enoch said, let me tell you what Enoch said. He says, because they are all fathers in the walk. They are all fathers in the intimacy. They have to bless you in heaven first. Enoch said, I bless you with the same walk that I had in the God realm. But you are going to take this walk of Enoch beyond the God realm. So have you ever pictured the walk of Enoch in the father realm? That's what I'm talking about. You knew. Because Enoch did not walk with the father. He walked with God. Moses manifested the glory of God, not the glory of the father. So watch this. Enoch had the walk. Moses had the work. And Elijah had the move. Elijah, Jesus said to me, was the one given the most power in the God realm. Before he came. Moses was the one giving the most glory. Before he came. And Enoch is the one. Out of all the men in the Old Testament. He is the one who outranks everyone in heaven. When it comes to their love for God before Jesus. Enoch. He walked with God. And loved God above. He didn't go beyond. But he loved above all else. And this is what Jesus said. I am going to mix the former glories or the former walks with the latter walks and beyond. Meaning I'm taking the walk of Enoch and I'm doing it in a new way in your generation. So the walk of Enoch beyond. Don't miss this. And, and I have to, I'm going to start saying some things boldly because you all are not pulling. You need to pull. There's, there is so much. Oh, Lord, what word do I use, Holy Spirit? There is so much at your disposal on this Zoom for you not to pull down mantles of intimacy. And walk in it. I'm talking about in fullness. I'm not talking about the dreams and visions, which are beautiful. I'm talking about fullness or fullness. Both God realm and Father realm. Every day, um, even today, I just let me just be human. I was walking to the Jam Jamaican restaurant and the father started speaking. Because when you are the father's friend, he want to go wherever you go. I'm talking about the father, not Jesus. All the, when the, okay. When the father speaks, it's different than the way Jesus talks. It's different. But let me say this. Each one of you on the line. He said, remember the two dreams that was given by when I sent my son, David E. Taylor, in the dream, and T.B. Joshua and Prophet Sadhu. What did they tell you? See, sometimes God has to remind you what was said in the dream. Things are passed down in dreams. Listen to what he said today. He said, I am making new covenants, not like your fathers. It's in the Bible. He told the people of Israel, I'm making a new covenant with you, not like the ones I made with your fathers. Wait a minute. Are y'all hearing that? So the covenant of Enoch, even the covenant of Jesus. Father is saying he's making a new one beyond Jesus. In the God realm and Father realm. And it's new. And it's, you watch this, it's not like Enoch's 
although you will see similarities in it, but it's beyond. Everybody write it down. You must first have these four before we even continue. Every, each one of you write it down. You must have the ancient before the, the former before the latter. So tonight, I'm releasing it tonight. Because you know what he said? All the walks in the Bible, every relationship, both men and women, is in holy way. All the mantles. And I will show you who to place it on and it will multiply. So watch this. If the Lord tell me, put the mantle of Enoch on you, it will multiply. That means you will go beyond Enoch. You will go from walking with God to walking in the Father. I said, I said, Jesus, this is a huge responsibility. All these mantles of intimacy, I will show you who to release it on. He said, when you release it on them, it will multiply. It will go, they will go beyond those mantles. But they first need to have the foundation, meaning the ancient, before they can come into the latter and beyond. Let me say it again. He has to give you the former glories before he can give you the latter glory. Well, he has to give you the former works as your foundation first before you can go beyond. So, watch this. Enoch took off his mantle. Moses took off his. My friends, right before my eyes, the mantles of, the way they walk in the God realm, it begin to multiply. And he said, I will show you those on earth. You will go. How many of you remember Elijah? God told Elijah, go, throw your mantle on Elijah, on Elisha. That's how it's going to be. God said, go to Elisha and throw your, your mantle on him. Now, imagine ancient ladder and new heaven and new earth mantles of intimacy. I'm not talking about power. Because he said they have to have the intimacy before I give them power and glory. I'm not giving them power without intimacy. It will corrupt them. All of us, do we see the first four? The ancient ones? You have to have that first. It's your inheritance in the saints. You see that? The riches and the glory of the inheritance of the saints. Do you know which prophet loved God the most before Jesus? It was Enoch. In heaven, Father showed it clear. Let me show you my glory in Enoch. Let me show you my glory in Moses. Let me show you my glory in Elijah. And let me show you my glory in my son, Jesus. He broke it down. Enoch walked with me in the God realm. He loved me above all things in the God realm. He said, all the prophets, he loved me the most. See? He said, Moses, I gave him the most glory because while Enoch was in my heart, Moses was in my face. And then Elijah, the hand of God was on him. Y'all see the, the difference now? Moses' face, Elijah' hand, Enoch's heart. I gave Elijah the most power. But I gave my son Jesus, not only the ancient, but the latter. That's why Jesus is greater, because he's a son. They were prophets. Now, if I'm taking you beyond my son, how does that look? For all of you. So please write it down again. I want to love you in a way I've not yet loved you. Mm. Or... Just like human beings, we get 
and we get familiar with people's love and what we start doing, this honor, treating it cheap, treating it casual. No. There are seasons he walk with you on water. And the next season he walk with you in the valley. You don't walk with him in the same place every time in season. It shifts. Because he wants you to learn his face, his heart, and his hand in different times and different seasons. Let me finish this letter, please. But please take note of that. Do you want to know me intimately? Do you desire that I give my heart to you? Come to me with your whole heart. Give me your heart and your love. Surrender your life and dreams. If you surrender and give me your heart, I will give you my heart. You will be filled with my spirit and I'll pour out my love on you. For you will be a precious possession to me you would then be the apple of my eyes. Do you desire to know me deeper? Closer? Greater? I'll release my love and compassion and peace over you and you will understand that I want to dwell inside of you and enlarge myself in you. For you are created in my image for a specific purpose. You are not part of the Godhead, but the closer you walk with me, the more you become like me in life and nature as I enlarge myself in you. This is what it means to be intimate with me. Okay, everyone online, what is intimacy? Not just having the knowledge or head knowledge about it. No, you need the experience of it. Intimacy with Jesus is becoming like him in image, likeness, nature, and heart. It's not just knowing his image. You must become. He said, it is me growing in you. A lot of people grow up in church, but they don't grow in him. It is me growing in you. Every day, more and more. The intimacy comes when you build a relationship with me daily. See? So let, let's, let's put the relationship, intimacy, relationship, fellowship, and communion in rank. Intimacy is first. Because he said right here, the intimacy comes, wow, when you build the relationship. If you don't build a relationship with Jesus, you can't, you can't move to intimacy. So let's break it down. Y'all ready? Build a relationship with Jesus. Then you move on to intimacy. After intimacy, you move on to fellowship. Watch this. Fellowship is suffering with him. Relationship is walking with him. But intimacy is becoming like him. In ways. In character. In oneness. While communion, see? So while relationship with him is built... Y'all see that? Write it down. Your relationship with Jesus must be built. Your intimacy with him must be planted like a tree. That means, watch this. He will give you treasures of his heart for you to build your relationship with him. You have to build it. Oh, I have a relationship with Jesus. What? Okay, how many stones do you have? If you can't answer that, yeah, I'm sorry. I have to bring us all on the right narrow path because a lot of people nonchalantly say they have relationship with jesus but if you really ask them okay how did peter build his relationship with jesus on the rock of revelation so father will give you watch this this is how you know you have a relationship with jesus father will give you a rock to build on i will build my church on this revelation write it down father has to give you a, a rock for you to build your relationship with Jesus. Holy way, we have 12. He said, upon these rocks, I will build my brides. See, each rock is an intimacy. I will build my bride, take sapphire. I will build my sons, take gold. Each rock 
it's a relationship with him. I'll build my sons. So that's how you know what he's building in our midst. There is a stone. It's called infinity stones. It's in the heart of the father. He takes the stones from his father's heart. Then he builds his bride from his father's heart. Write it down. It's very important. Your relationship with Jesus must be built, be rooted and grounded, mm? rooted and grounded, twofold, rooted, intimacy, grounded relationship. Are you building your relationship or he's just relating to you? My God, I need to put this phone down, Jesus. Is he just relating to you or are you building? Because he can relate to you. Oh, I love you. But you're not building. Because after the building is done, then you move on to intimacy. Write down those four. It will help you. Who do you say I am? That's the beginning of relationship. Who do you say I am? He asked the 12. All of them got it wrong. That means none of them had a rock. My God, don't miss that. Who do you say I am is an identity question, but it's also a relationship building with, between you and him. And you know why it was given to Peter? Because P Peter loved Jesus the most. So it is the person who loved Jesus the most, the father starts giving infinity stones to build friends, sons, and brides for Jesus. Peter's responsibility was to build the church. He wasn't supposed to build brides, friends, and sons. You see, 2,000 years ago, it was building the church, not the bride. It's called infinity stones. It's the infinity place with the Father. And he has countless infinity stones. He said, but all you need is 12. New Jerusalem, new heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem. It has to be given to a wise master builder. All of you write it down. Has Jesus been relating to you or have you been building the relationship? That's deep. You say, huh? What do you mean? Don't miss what I'm about to tell you. He said, I've called you friends. You didn't choose me. That means they were not building. Okay, we're going to break it down. Don't miss this. The 12 disciples who became Jesus' friends, he chose them. They didn't choose him. Don't miss this. The only person who chose the relationship out of everyone in the Bible with Jesus was Mary. Jesus himself said, she has chosen. Okay, wait a minute. I've chosen you. I no longer call you sevens, but friends. I chose you. You didn't choose me. So the 12 friends of Jesus, they didn't choose him. He chose them. Don't miss this. But he said about Martha and Mary, she has chosen. There's a difference between him choosing you and you choosing if you don't choose, you can't start building. Don't miss that. So there are many people. You know why people lose their relationship with Jesus so easy? Watch this. He's patient. Separate this. He's faithful. He's loyal. He's committed. He will never leave or forsake you. What about you? That's what you need to be building. You need to be building a faithfulness with him. See, you need to build loyalty with him. He's already loyal. That's who he will be. That's who he is. Who are you? And if you're not building the relationship, the intimacy will not last. So let's get the order. Are y'all ready? This is very, very important. Oh, Jesus, I love you. Nothing wrong with that. Are you building? Because when the storms and the trials come, if you built on sand, you will realize, my God, I was playing religion this whole time. I wasn't a friendship. You see? He said, I don't, I'm not in religion. I want a relationship. So you can be in religion and not be in a relationship. Religion is built on the Tower of Babel. Relationship is built on revelation of Jesus. Watch this. He can give you a revelation of him. But wait, are you building it? Are you building that, religion, that re revelation he gave you? Okay. If Jesus revealed himself to you as king, you know what you're supposed to do with that revelation? You're supposed to build it. How do I build? Who do you say I am on the line? 
You can't have a some say, oh, some say you're Elijah. Can you imagine? They were walking with him for three years and they didn't know who he was. They go by what some say, he say about him. So when he asks them, who do you say I am? They get it wrong. That should tell you the 12 disciples, other than Jesus, from the beginning, only Peter had a relationship. Shocking, right? Do you know how John got his? I'm going to share with you how. John started building on the heart. Ooh, don't miss that. Judas had a friendship with Jesus because they both enjoyed kisses with one another daily. That's why in the end, that kiss they began with turned into a kiss of betrayal. He didn't build his friendship with Jesus on those kisses. Jesus is talking to me right now that all of us must meditate on Matthew 16, 15. Who do you say I am? You can mention, oh, oh yeah, you are the son of God. Was it revealed to you or you learned it? Because you are saying it, but you're not building. Write it down. This is major. Oh, Lord, thank you so much. See, everyone on the line, let me give you a secret. Yield to Jesus. Yield to his heart. Don't say what you want to say or what you feel like you need to say. You see, we're supposed to be praying, right? But he said, no. They must build the ark in their hearts. They must build on the revelations I've given them. Are you building the relationship on a rock? Let me say it again. Those who love Jesus the most, like Peter, Father will start giving revelations about Jesus on a rock. He said, I will build. See, after the, rev after the revelation came, Peter started building with Jesus. When he revealed himself to you, did you start building? So write it down. Relationship with Jesus is built. But fellowship with Jesus is through suffering. It's earned. That's, let me, let, just look at all four. Let me tell you the hearts for each one. You ready? Intimacy, relationship, fellowship, and commun communion. Let's start with Jesus Christ because he's the way to the Father by the Holy Spirit. So he's the way. So let's, let's start, let's stay at the way. Fellowship produces meekness. Suffering. So fellowshipping in his sufferings, that's meekness. You see, relationship with him is obedience. Intimacy is love. Communion is trust. Now, which one is sons? Which one is friends? Which one is brides? You ready? Brides are always in intimacy. They don't have a, they're not in relationship. Because you can have a relationship with someone but not be able to relate if you're not intimate. Intimacy is for brides. Relationship is for sons. That's why he, that's what the father revealed to Peter. That thou art the Christ, the son of God. See? Relationship is for sons. While fellowship is for friends. Friends carry crosses, fellowship of suffering. When you become Jesus' friend, get ready for fellowshipping him with suffer in his sufferings. You can't be his friend if you don't lay down your life to fellowship with him in his sufferings. Because that's how he appoints unto you things from his father to you. So let me say it again. Have you been building your relationship with Jesus Christ? Or you are solely depending on him to do his part and you're not doing your part in the relationship. Just think about it. It takes two to walk together. You have a part to play. Um, and let me help you if you don't mind.
who do you say I am? Let me show you how the building takes place. When your love, when you love Jesus the most, Father gets involved and starts giving you, you, revelation about Jesus Christ to build. Not a church. That's why Peter made a mistake. When he was taken to the Mount of Transfiguration, oh, I see Moses, I see Elijah, I see Jesus. Let's build a tabernacle. He was building the wrong thing. Do you see when you get revelation from Jesus Christ, you can build the wrong thing with it? You can. A lot of people are doing it. Oh, God told me this. So let me let me start build. He didn't tell you to start building. You need to be transfigured before you start building. Peter made a mistake. That's why Father God rebuked him. Remember what the Father said the first time? Jesus said, I will build my church. So the moment he saw the glory of Jesus, he wanted to build a tabernacle. Can you see when you see glory or revelation, you want to build your own thing? And God rebuked him. Many are building tabernacles, not intimacies. They are building tabernacles of Moses, Elijah, and Jesus, not relationship with him. So they need, they need to be rebuked. You say, how do you build this relationship with Jesus Christ? Write it down. You need to start building. That's why when the storms come, see, if you build your house on a sand or on a rock, do you have a sandy relationship with Jesus or a rock? They don't tell us these things in church. Oh, we are all children of God. Oh, everybody is a bride. Nope. Not all are my sheep. Not all are my bride. I have that letter. It is those who love, obey, and trust me. He is looking for quality, not quantity. So in holy way, it's a privilege and an honor with these eternity and infinity stones of the Father to build on the revelation of Jesus Christ for his sons, friends, and brides. And each one of you, you will have a dominant one. Out of the three intimacies that are being built, sons, friends, and brides, you will have one that's dominant. You need to know. You can't guess it. Oh, I feel, I think, that's where you go wrong. He has to tell you. Peter, you are the rock. See, Jesus has to tell you. You can't, you can't tell him. He has to tell you. Peter, I'm going to change your name from Simon to Peter. Mm -hmm. And upon this rock, the Father just gave you, see? I'll build my church. He said, I'll build my sons, friends or brides. That wasn't Peter's assignment after the revelation. You know there are assignments after revelations. So everybody, please write it down. Intimacy is different from relationship. Relationship is built. Intimacy is planted in the garden, but relationship is built in the house. Upon this rock, I'll build my fellowship is sufferings. That's more of friends. Brides can suffer. See, the reason why I'm spreading it out so you can see where they each fall. Brides are more in the intimacy. Romance, just company, just loving on him, you know, comforting him, consoling him. That's what brides do the most. Brides hardly suffer unless they have both friendship, relationship, and bridal combined. Then they will do 50-50. Is everybody seeing it? Have you been building your relationship with Jesus? You don't want him to choose you as a friend and you're not building the friendship with him. He called Judas friend, but Judas wasn't a friend to him. I need to say this in meekness, y'all, because we really need the spirit of the fear of the Lord strong in the body of Christ. Do you know Jesus can be a friend to you? 
but you're not a friend to him. Mm. Oh, I'm a friend of God. Wait, are you a friend to him? Did you choose the friendship or he chose you? See, he chose the 12. They didn't choose him. So when the trial came, they all left. I'm trying to help you all. Don't miss it. Whatever intimacy, relationship. Sorry, watch this. Any level of relationship Jesus calls you, a test will come to prove if you have it. When he chose them friends, what did he say? All of you will leave me today. If they chose the friendship, they won't leave. Uh-oh. Peter tried. And he denied. Because you have to choose the friendship. It's I've chosen you as friends to go and bear fruit and glorify my father. Do you know why the 12 left? Only one was left. Don't miss this. Even though John did not choose the friendship, he had his heart. See, I need to help all of us on the line. There is a meekness about Jesus that's dangerous that people have not learned. He can be a friend to you, but that don't mean you are a friend to him. Because when the friendship test came, they all forsook him. He told them, you will all leave me, including Peter, whom he gave the keys. So just because you failed the friendship test, that don't mean he's going to take away what he gave you. See? Are you building the relationship with, I'm not even talking about father yet. You got to start with Jesus first. Write it down. I want to help you all. You need to go back from when you began walking with Jesus till now. Every revelation that he gave you, you didn't understand his meekness that you were supposed to build with that revelation. Many are busy building their own ministries, building their own empires. They're not building the kingdom on revelation. That's why they're not going to last this next seven years. Their lampstands will be taken because they've left their first love on building intimacy. See, building relationship. These words will preserve you. Let's, I'm going to say it again. Look at the four again before we end the letter. We're going to be praying soon. Relationship is built on love, obedience, and trust. Loyalty and faithfulness usually comes in the fellowship realm. See, there, there are hearts in all four. Can I, can I tell y'all this if you don't mind? Um, intimacy, relationship, fellowship, and communion. There are different hearts in each one of them. They are all not the same. Even though I separated the first time, but let me first uh, put them all in order where they belong and how you can even change them sometimes. Watch this. Faithfulness is not in relationship. It's in fellowship. If you don't suffer with someone, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Faithful are the wounds. No wounds. You can't be faithful. You can't be a faithful friend to Jesus if you don't have wounds. You won't be faithful. So faithfulness is in fellowship with suffering. And the fellowship of his suffering, see? That means Paul was a friend. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Fellowship of suffering is friendship. Do you know what hearts produces in, 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 in fellowship? And suffering is let me just give you four because there's mu there's so much long suffering, patience, faithfulness, and a whole lot of meekness. You get meekness the most in fellowship, not in intimacy or relationship. Because you know what meekness is? Meekness is to say, not my will, but your will be done. And actually do the will. Surrendering your will. Yielding your will to another to fulfill destiny. Moses was the meekest man on earth. 
Is everybody seeing the hearts that are producing all four? So let me give you a few hearts, if you don't mind. The integrity of hearts, if you don't mind. Intimacy hearts are different from relationship hearts. Remember, intimacy is for brides. Relationship is for sons. Fellowship is for friends. Communion is for all children. So you can be in communion, but not intimacy. Do you see that? You have to separate it. Many people pray to God, but they don't really have a relationship. He hears them because they are in his image. He created them. He hears all creation, good and evil. But you got to go past communion. When I say communion, I'm not talking about the bread and the wine. That's fellowship. Fellowship, when you fellowship with him, it's his body and his blood. It's, wet, it's, it's wine and bread. Communion is for sevens. It's for children. Have you been building on I am that I am? Because Peter did not build right after his revelation, he ended up denying. Ooh, don't miss that. To look at all four image, likeness, nature, heart. They are all there. It is time to be a wise master bride builder. Relationship is built on the rock of his heart. See? Sorry, intimacy is the heart. See? Relationship is the face. See? Fellowship is the hand. Communion is the feet, the walk, the communion. So take note of that. It's time for you to build. on the rock so that the gates of hell don't prevail. The reason why the gates of hell prevail, we are, we are not building on him. Do you see why the gates of hell prevailing in the church? Rampant, Jesus said. Current, the current structure of the church is rampant in Jezebel's system. They are withholding my people from their destinies. If you're in the Jezebel system, you won't reach your destiny. So let me say it again. Revelation is beautiful. Secrets are beautiful. Mysteries are beautiful. Treasures are beautiful. What did you do with it? I'm going to give you a secret. Don't miss this. For the past 15 years, I thank Jesus. He came early to tell me this. Now I want to share with you. You won't see manifestations if you don't build. The manifestation comes after you have built the revelation. Because the gates of hell will come against the revelation if there's no building. That's why on the day of Pentecost, they were in the upper room. By revelation, there was manifestation. Because they built, see, they built on his instruction for 120 days. He said tonight, ask me to reveal to you who you are in me. Do you know who you are in me and to me? I created you for a very specific purpose, a godly, kingly purpose to do on earth. Do you want to know what it is, my sons, friends, and brides? 
ask me to show you what your purpose here on earth is. For now is the time I will reveal what I require from you. Should you ask me. My God, that's scary. Oh, Jesus, please help us, please. That's scary. If you don't ask, he won't tell you. I think openly now I will share something with you all. Hopefully it creates humility in all of us. And Jesus told me to do the same thing. If you don't ask, it can be given. If you don't seek, you won't find. If you don't knock, it won't be opened. Many of you on the line, I'm going to be, I'm going to be 100% with you. There are many times I want to come to you. And he will say, they have not asked. Don't give it. I require humility and honor before I open the treasure box of the Father. If you don't ask, it can't be given. If you don't ask Jesus, he won't give it to you. That's why many are asking the wrong things. We're supposed to be asking about our destiny, purpose, identity, intimacy. Who are you in him? You're not a Christian. I want to help you from you being chosen by him to you choosing him. The only person in the Bible, in the four Gospels who chose him was Mary. She has chosen a portion that would not be taken away from her. Why was it taken away from Judas? Bam. You see? It was taken from Judas. Jesus told me Judas lost his inheritance. He lost everything. His sonship. The only thing he didn't lose that is in heaven is that because I chose him as a friend. I will leave 99 and go for one. So he left, the, he left the 12 on earth and went to hell for Judas. I put it on Facebook and everybody was, everybody was attacking me. I said, okay, it's okay. It is well. You don't understand Jesus' heart for redemption for his friends. He can go through death and hell for his friend. Come on. Mm -hmm. So I left the 99 on earth and I went for one in hell, Judas, because he's my friend. So the friendship will preserve you from death, but the bride will preserve you from hell. Do you see? You, you're not going to taste death. Oh, hell. He was sitting on the rock, my friends, in his crucified body, wearing a crown of thorns on his head, and he was bleeding. His skin was full of stripes. He was wearing a red robe. He lit up his eyes and looked at me and said, I will go through death and hell all over again just for our marriage and our friendship. After the process, now you will go through death and hell with me for others' friendship and marriage with me. After you lay down your life for Jesus, now you got to lay down your life for others. Friends lay down their life. You say you have friends, but you have not laid down your life. You say you have friends, but you don't have their wounds. We're going to have to really redefine kingdom friendship in the body of Christ because the friendship we have is worldly. It's not kingdom. Let me give you three things. Jesus always talks about friendship with him. A friend love at all times. See, he didn't say a bride. A bride can love at all times. My God, don't miss that. A son can love at all times. A friend can. Hmm. Do you see it? It's all in the Bible. Only a friend can lay down his life. A bride can't. A son can't. The only one who can take up their cross is the son. I'm saying this because how are your relationships with those on earth whom you call friends? Have you laid down your life for your friends to come into the greater love? Jesus, his meekness is, ooh. I was a man of God who was pastoring for 20 years and he was outside the will of God. 
he asked Jesus, what is your will? He said, you've been pastoring out of my will for 20 years. He asked Jesus, why didn't you tell me? He said, you never asked. Jesus will not tell you certain things if you don't ask. You would think you are in his will, but you are out of it. Because you are doing what people say you should do. Oh, I think you should be a pastor. I, I think you should start your own ministry. Which kind? You don't want him to be meek and quiet with you, listening to people. It's time for each and every one of you. See those four? New identities, new... Look, they are new destinies. I'll, I'll share this with all of you, don't mind. There are old destinies and there are new destinies. Let me say this. Clearly, as he said it, when he was, when he was talking to me about the new, uh, the new kings, because you know the old, the second, first and second kings is old. He said, "I'm, I'm starting new kings. Watch this. Uh, new kings, and how that we watch this. We have two destinies. We have one on earth, one in heaven. We have a creation purpose on earth and a creation purpose in heaven." So you have two destinies on the line. You have two purposes. You have, you have many identities. And you have many intimacies. Everybody, do you see it? Can you imagine a lot of people in church? They are in ministry. They don't know what their destiny is. You say, how? My friends, I can only share with you what he says. You know what scared me one day? He said, my son, many will not make it to their destinies because they have made ministry an idol. And when you have made ministry an idol, you can't even hear me calling you out of idolatry because you are bound by it. He said, ministry is marriage. Marriage is ministry. It's not destiny. It's not purpose. I created you for me, not for someone else. Many are in ministry. Will they reach their destiny with Jesus? Their purpose with the Father? And you have two with him, two with the Father. You have two purposes with the Father. You have two with Jesus. I'm going to say it again. You have two purposes with the Father. One on earth, one in heaven. One is God realm, one is Father realm. You have two destinies with Jesus. One is Jesus realm, one is Christ realm. But above all, now is the time I will reveal. See? Now is the time he wants to reveal to you. Not only who he is to you, but the name to build on. Everybody write it down. It's the name the Father gave you. You should start building on those names he gave you. Ancient of days, covenant making, covenant keeping God. You don't just want manifestation. Manifestation without building, you will lose the manifestation because there's no foundation to dress and keep the manifestation. Write it down again. This will help you. It is time for each and every one of you, the names that the Father revealed to you. And there are some new ones. I'm waiting in time for me to come and share with you in new heaven and new earth. Oh, yes, the Father has some new names that's on the Bible. He has new names that's not in the Bible. And I'll show you in Revelation. He talks about it. Because each one of you have new names in heaven too. But you see, everybody's talking about there's a new move, a new move coming. They don't know what ram is coming from. Only a few know because they are the ones paying the price. The people who pay the price for others, they know what ram is coming from. And they lay down their life for that ram to open for others. It's not about it's, it's look, doing business with the father is so beautiful. It's, it's a selfless. Selfless, sacrificial, suffering, beautiful. Oh my God, man. I want to tell y'all some things, man. Whew. Business with the Father and Jesus is beautiful. The demand and supply, the buying and selling. Hmm. 
It's a beautiful thing to pay the price for others. Oh, yeah. You lay down your life for others. It's so beautiful. But take note, all of you on the line, that time has come. I'm sharing with you now, the time has come for you to know both. You have two destinies. You say how? One as a man, one as a son. Jesus the man, Christ the son. You have two. And then in the father realm and the God realm, you have two purposes. One in the God realm, creation. One in the father realm, birthing. You must fulfill. That's full. I just gave you fullness right there. It, both. I hope you're writing. Well, what's my destiny? You have two. Because your your you ask this, your identity should go with your destiny. Your intimacy go with your purpose. And it's not what people say. Each one of you, by grace, I can come to you and tell you. But sometimes Jesus will tell me, yes, there's times for you to uh, share with them, but there are times. Come on. You have to be quiet. Because I, want, I, I really want to help you. Make it to both. You ever heard any of your leaders tell you you have two purposes? They'll tell you your gifts. They'll tell you who you are in the church. That season, that age is over. It's time for you to know your purpose in the Father and God realm by nature. In the God realm, you are a man and a woman. In the Father realm, you are a son and a daughter. You need to know both. And you also need to know the nature to fulfill it. He said, I can show you about Jesus. He had to be a lamb of God to fulfill his purpose in the God realm. See? He had to be a lamb. Nature. You see, there is a, everyone on the line, look at the four living creatures, the lion, the eagle, the lamb, the ox, the man. See those five? In the God realm, each one of you, there is a nature to fulfill purpose. Jesus took on the lamb. Moses took on the lion. Elijah took on the eagle. So you can't even fulfill your purpose without knowing the nature of your purpose. I refuse. I'm sorry, y'all. I refuse to be. And Brian Kahn said it very beautiful. Many are outdated. You know what that means when your when your phone is not updated? When you don't update the body of Christ. Come on. They need an update. iOS on their iPhones. I don't know what are your two purposes? And those two purposes I just mentioned, the God and Father realm, there are two identities for, to fulfill it. And there are two intimacies to fulfill it. And everything Jesus did it, I can show you. Him as a son, him as a God. Him as a man. He did it. All things are made new. It's time for you to know. I have it here in the book, but he said, be quiet. You know, I'm like a little child. I want to give it to all of you. So he said, be quiet. You know, there's a time to speak. It's a time to be quiet. Because you must walk with me. See? He said, you must walk with me. So let me say it again. Which one is your dominant relationship with him? Your dominant intimacy with him? Your dominant fellowship with him? Your dominant communion with him? If you're going to be Jesus' friend, I'm letting you know right now, you will have to watch this. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. He just said, cup, baptism. Intimacy is cup. Baptism is relationship. Will you be baptized in my baptism? And will you drink the cup that I will drink? See? Intimacy cup. 
baptism relationship. Fellowship of suffering, friendship. See, you have to drink the cup. Cup, baptism, crown, and then cross. Cross, cup, crown, baptism. Crown for sons, cup for brides. See? Baptism for friends, but baptism of suffering. Cross, communion. Sin bearing servant, carries the cross. There you go. Do you want the fullness? We have it in holy way. God realm, Father realm. It's, it's, at, it's at your disposal. But you can't be slow to heart to learn. He said, all the intimacies in the Bible, men and women. See? I will show you those on earth who need these mantles for me to multiply it on them. So can you imagine you walking in the relationship Jesus had with the Father? Multiplied. That's a mantle. He said, take mantles by name. The moment you put it on there, the moment you put it on them, when I tell you to, my name will manifest in that mantle. By intimacy. So if you so watch this, if the mantle of Enoch come on you, it will be in a new way. It won't be the way Enoch walked. It will be in a new way. How does that look, my friends? When the mosaic cup, the mosaic mantle come on you, it won't be like Moses. It will be in a new way because we're in a different generation than Moses. So that's why I said, pray that prayer. I want to walk with you in a way I've not yet walked in a new way. He said, all, all the ancient intimacies. I'm combining it with the latter in a new way because this generation, we are wrestling with seven more wicked. So we need seven more. See? Seven more. Is that day at 11 o'clock we're going to pray because we want to pray till he said today we should watch him pray for one hour. So that's why I'm lingering. I'm lingering because he said we should pray for one hour. And we're going to do 11 to 12. Hopefully those who are on the line right now, look at the list in the chat. I hope you've chosen your state. Choose your state. And we're going to come before him as prince of the kings of the earth. Tonight. I have already seen the end. Because he's the beginning and the end. Jesus knew who will begin with him and who will end with him. When you become his friend, he does the same thing with you. He will show you in the end those who will become this, those who will become that. Those That's, the, that's what fathers do. They know your end. They know what you're going to become. I just have to be honest with us. When Jesus told me in 2018 that the fathers in your generation have failed, my heart broke. And he said, can I trust you? This is a heavy responsibility. People's destinies, people's purposes, people's identities, people's crowns, people's souls. People in church are playing with it. Souls that Jesus died for, don't play with them. It's a huge responsibility that must be carried out with love, humility, and meekness. Can be no room for pride or arrogance or superiority and authority. He must walk humble with his sons, friends, and brides. They are his. 
many people think the people in the church are theirs. That's their problem. They have a pharaoh spirit. They are his. If he gives you the privilege and honor to train and equip and build and process and his sons, friends, and bride, do you, do you know the, my friend, do you know the honor? You don't take that lightly. And you don't want to lead them astray. Lead them in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So let me say it again. Each and every one of you on the line, look at those three again. Sons, friends, and brides. Which one is your dominant? Before we start, you should be praying it. Which one is your dominant? Oh, I feel, get out of your feelings. It's not a feeling. You must know. Give diligence to make your calling. An you need to be election sure. Not just, I, I, I think I'm a friend of God. I even made it past Abraham. Where are you going? See, you shall know them by their fruits, not by their words. You have to, it has to be sure on the line. So, everybody, please write it down. Every single person on the line. How is your relationship with Jesus? Which one do you have with him the most? And which one do you have with the Father the most? He hasn't released me to tell you. Because I want to help you, but... Don't you want to help somebody discover who they are? But he would say, no, wait. Be quiet. It's a time to speak, a time to release. I'm just going to tell you, as he said it, they will be greatly tested in this age. I have the letter there. He said, this age will be greatly tested because he's looking for those who will rule and reign with him in the new millennium, new heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem. So he's using this time to see who will choose to marry Jesus. Mm -hmm. he's, as far as Father say, this end times and last days, he's looking to see who will marry Jesus. More than security and money. He's looking. Father's looking. Who will rule with reign, who will rule with reign with him? That tests of love. So, I remember Jesus said many people left the church because most of their questions were not answered because the leaders failed. I was scared. 2018? Can I trust you? Can I trust you to bring my sons, friends, and brides to you? like John the Baptist, and prepare them for me. That's why we are all here. It's fulfillment of decree from the Father. You are here to be prepared like a John the Baptist. I'm like a John the Baptist to you to prepare you to be a bride, a son, and a friend to the Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. When the hour come and the Holy Spirit come upon you, you'll be released. We're always going to be a family, but each and every one of you must fulfill your destiny. I'm not holding anybody in holy way. I'm going to make that crystal clear. Once your training and equipment is done, and Father speaks from heaven, you, it's time. That's it. Don't hold none of the sons and daughters of the Father. They don't belong to you. They belong to him. And John the Baptist did a great job preparing Jesus for war and for ministry. See? He told me, I, I, he told me, I use John the Baptist to prepare my son for Satan. Training for Satan for 40 days. I said, well, I never saw that, Father. I thought the Holy Spirit just came on Jesus and he was led by the Holy Spirit to be tempted by Satan. He said, John the Baptist prepared him by the four revelations he gave. Wow. He said, I will send my sons and daughters to Holy Way and just like John the Baptist. Sons, Jesus, friends, brides, prepare them against Satan and for me. Just, it's just in the word. So, before we start praying in 10 minutes, I hope you have your state. 
It's how many of us are online? It's 51 of us to get great. We have 50 states. So each one of you should have one. Each one of you should have one. I'm going to say it again. After your training and equipping in Holy Way, you will be sent from his face, from his heart, from his hand, and his name. And he always says it when I'm in the car. Remember, I've given you my name and my seal for my sons and daughters. So don't put my name and seal on anyone who is not yet finished. You ever online is yeah, so important. Jesus couldn't have started without the Holy Spirit coming upon him. See? He said, the one you see the Holy Spirit, John saw the Holy Spirit. Come on, Jesus. That's how you know he was ready. So I'm going to say it again. Each and every one of you, you have a destiny. You have a purpose, right? Mm -hmm. You have to fulfill your destiny and your purpose. That's why you are here to be trained, mm -hmm, to rule, equipped to reign, training in humility, equipping in meekness, ruling in humility, reigning in meekness. Once you have the foundation of Jesus' heart, you're ready. Because I'm telling you, a lot, of, a lot of these young prophets don't have foundation. They're not false. They're just immature. I was there before. Thank God for a father who, who my chastisements daily. You, look, I thank God for my spiritual father, man. Chastisements, corrections, rebukes. Keeps you humble. So all of you, I'm going to say it again. Oh, when the hour comes, Jesus said, this one is ready. Use the keys on this one. They are ready. Use the keys on this one. I'm doing it. For, to unlock your destiny on earth. To unlock your purpose on earth. It takes keys. Bam. You shall glorify his name. You shall carry his heart, his glory. And watch this. Each and every one of you, don't miss what I'm about to tell you. You agreed in heaven before coming on earth. An amount of souls through your life to come to Jesus. You already agreed in heaven before coming on earth to lay down your life for Jesus. See? for an amount of souls to come to him. Everybody, you see, so some of you, you might just, just one soul. You went through all that suffering in life just for one soul to come to Christ. That's your assignment. That's not your assignment. There you go. But remember, your destiny is in two places. He says, if we reign with him, we suffer with him. That's earth. And then we rule in him, with him in heaven. That's two destinies, ruling and reigning. Bride, and sons friends don't really have a destiny they lead to the they, they lead the brides and sons to the destination because they are the gatekeepers of the kingdom they open the gate friends open the gates of the kingdom for the brides and sons to come in so i'm always at the feet of the of the father and jesus on your behalf father when is it time for so so and so 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 and so okay son write it down this one has three more years this one has two more years. My friends, be ready. This one has four more years. This one has five more years. This one has 10 more years. Some of you have three years. Some of you have two. Some of you have four. Some of you have five. He's ancient of days. He will tell you. Mm -hmm. Jesus knew they needed three years before he, le he left. He spent three years with the disciples. He knew they three years. He will tell you. See this one? Three years. This one, two years. This one, one year. This one, five years. This one, 10 years. Now write it down. To keep you in the will of God. So be, when I say be ready, y'all, be ready. Be ready means, oh, I don't feel, I don't want your feelings. Once the Holy Spirit come upon you, you're going to turn into a lion.
<laughs> it's not about feelings. I don't feel I'm ready. No. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. You're going to turn into a lion. Bam. Have a war. Mm -hmm. It is the Holy Spirit who comes upon you for the work of the Father. Mm -hmm. So, I'm excited. Now, we're all ready for tonight. Do we all have tonight? Do we all have tonight uh, our state? Let me see. Can, can somebody please repost it again? Let's begin tonight. Awesome. So do we all see the states in the chat? Can we all please look at the chat? Kindly, each one of you, let's do it again. Choose one, choose one state. Choose one state before we begin. It's 11 o'clock, so please, what we're going to do is we're going to do everything in decency and order. Um, Yeah, we're going to do everything in decency and order. Choose one state, and then you, you're going to pray openly on the Zoom for Alabama, openly. When you are done, the next person comes. He said, this is how you should do it today. Each one of them should choose one of the states in America and pray openly and then go to the next.